astrology soulmates and welcome to your weekly horoscope for the week of october 19th where this week we start off action-packed on monday we've got a square an opposition a trine and then we move down the week and we've got venus again in a trine with another planet with pluto and we're going to end this week with mercury and the sun in conjunction talking to each other sharing space mercury is retrograde so an opportunity to maybe correct something you were thinking or something that you said Either way, as it pans out and I look through this week, I think it all turns out to be very good, very usable energy, and a little bit of a deep breath from maybe what was happening last week as well. So I look forward to walking you through what's happening this week. Also, we start off on Monday with Shakira Taborn coming over to the Eat and Greets, and we're going to talk about this ascending energy. Giulio Pellegrini will be over on Tuesday as well. Cousin Clarissa will be back for part two of the presidential candidates charts via the lens of vibrational astrology and then on Wednesday Melissa LaFaro will be here and we're going to talk Mars retrograde plus the Saturn Jupiter conjunction and how those weave together in the cycles of what Mars has been doing so I think it's going to be a really interesting week I look forward to seeing you in those eat and greets and remember you can watch the eat and greets back live or back ad free instead of seeing them free and ad free during the live you can see them in the replay ad free by joining me over on patreon and again i will remind you that the reason patreon was created on this particular channel is that just because you pay for youtube premium does not mean that your content creators see it or it actually supports them usually your highest paid content creator will see that so things to keep in mind as you're considering which channels you would like to support via youtube or Patreon. Okay, enough of the house cleaning. Let's get into what's going on this week. As we come into the week here on the 19th, very busy. Square, opposition, trine. It is a loaded day of things going on. So right as we're coming in, we see that we've got Mars and Jupiter coming together in their square. Now, this is the last time that they're going to square for this year. So, you know, it's going to happen and it's going to move on. You don't have to stay and live in this forever. Now, as these two come together and they are squared, what happens is, is I actually like the square because it stimulates us into action, right? We've got Jupiter over here in the energy of Capricorn. We've got Mars over here retrograde in the energy of Aries. So very comfortable where Mars is, is related, even though he's flipped backwards. So what comes of these two energies is I think that Jupiter and Mars work together and Jupiter says, okay, Mars, Go back over your strategy. Like continue to look at the wisdom of going back over, re, retrograde, reviewing your strategy, reviewing your desire in this particular area of your life. And instead of interacting and clashing with Saturn where Mars puts up his defense and becomes this kind of teenager who's like, you're not going to tell me what to do. In the interaction of Jupiter, it's like Mars meets that wise uncle, you know, and he's like, oh, okay. All right, Uncle Jupe, give me a minute. I'm going to go back and I will relook at this. So Mars actually think in this particular square works a bit more willingly to go back and relook at the actions to go back to big problems big thoughts big ideas big structural things Jupiter and Capricorn and have a review of them Mars is also quite courageous as he moves backwards to tackle these things right he's going with a sense of I'm that sacred soldier I want to bring life to this area of my life or this area of my project or wherever that is interacts for you in your particular chart. So you get this courageous energy to go back and review big things, big ideas, big structures in your life as we see those two come into square. Now, later the same day, what's going to happen is we're going to see Mercury come into um, an opposition with Uranus. Now, they are both retrograde, so everybody is facing backwards. This is going to be happening at um, between Scorpio and Taurus energy at nine degrees, okay? So as everybody is facing backwards here, Mercury, our energy of thought, communications, decisions, um, anything that we're thinking of the mind, details, things like that is opposing. So going in an opposite direction of Uranus, who's over here trying to awaken something very steady in our lives, but it's going back over to awaken what it's already looked at. In the energy of Taurus, Uranus has come and shaken up our structures, our stability, our foundations, our self-esteem over here. But now in the retrograde, he's going back over. It's like Achuta Bhava talks about it as a planet retrogrades. It puts that area it just worked on under cross-examination. So you're going to re-look at 
the thoughts and the decisions and the way that you're communicating. You're going to um, have your mental process, since they are both retrograde, your mental process may get sped up between these two particular areas and you are really thinking through probably some Jupiter things, some past energies, some past conversations, some um, some things that made you uncomfortable. Maybe they made you tense. Maybe they made you worried. What are you worrying about? You know, what's consistently been in your head for this last couple weeks? And this energy speeds up a little bit so that you can go back and review it, awaken to what's here, and then probably use that Mars energy to make some different decisions in this particular area. So it definitely comes to mix up some things. But remember, Mercury and Uranus come in a sense of innovation, which I really love that for you. Now, we're also going to see Venus come into the this beautiful trine with Jupiter. Now, these are the benefics working together. And a trine doesn't always mean that it's going to be the best thing ever. A trine can be just as detrimental as it can be good. But the two benefics coming together in a trine between Virgo and Capricorn at 19 degrees here. When these two trine each other, it adds a little bit of zhuzh because they both are forward. They're not um, retrograde. They want to bring some goodness to this area of your life. They bring some charm. They bring some luck to your finances, to your romance, to the ideas of your structure, especially long-term things that need to have structure to them. It brings a bit of grace into that particular energy. I also think though, because we have that Uranus Mercury um, going on, that opposition, that as things come up and they present challenge to us on this day, this trine enables us to tackle those with that sense of grace, with that sense of magnetism that's like, hold on, let's be delicate. Let's be diplomatic while also being firm in this energy. If this is a day or a time for you, whether it be business or personal, that you're having to do a fair amount of travel um, or you're having to have conversations with maybe international business or people who live further away from you, I think that this is a wonderful energy to help support that. And then you'll get further support at the end of the week to make commitments solid if you need to. So maybe this is where the conversations begin. You have reviewed it. And now as we get towards this end of the week, you'll be prepared to make something solid. But first, when we get to Wednesday the 21st, Venus is going to come into a trine with Pluto. Now this is going to still be, be, be between Virgo and Capricorn, but now it'll be a little bit further along, so at 23 degrees, okay? As Venus and Pluto come into a trine with one another, this makes me think very heavy in relationships and money more specifically than anything. And I really feel like the emphasis here this week is a little bit more about decisions and conversations around uh, structural relationships or foundational level relationships in our lives. And so as this interacts with Pluto, as Venus interacts with Pluto, it's like, can this transform? Is this evolving? It's an opportunity of ease and of growth and of expansion in this particular area. Venus is going to encourage the um, gentle transformation, while Pluto will encourage the transformation, the movement of taking this relationship or your money or whatever that connection is for you this week from this particular position to the next. Now, I also think because Venus is over value, that whether it be the relationship or it be the money this week, it's almost this idea of Take this big thing that we've been looking at at the beginning of the week, whether it's an idea, a project, a relationship, a belief, and turn it into value as Pluto and Venus trine. Literally take something and turn it into profit. Did you gather information this particular week or last week that is bringing me in this place where you're like, I can take that now and turn it into something that is profitable or something that is valuable in my life. Either way, that conversation with Venus and Pluto in that trine brings the ease of that evolution along. On the 22nd, we say happy birthday, Scorpio. Happy birthday, Scorpio. So the sun moves into the energy of of Scorpio, we will spend the next four weeks with light, heat, light, and motivation in the energy of the Scorpion. Now, this is sometimes I feel like Scorpio gets a bad rap. We give the archetype a bad, deep, broody, mysterious rap, and you are, but for good reason. Scorpio is one of our most vulnerable signs out there, so you're very picky with how you allow people, places, and things to come into your space because you do not want to be poked in that vulnerability. But as we spend the next four weeks with the sun here, we may get more intense. 
we may get more deep. You know, Scorpio is not afraid to go to hell and back because the answers are in the depths. The answers are behind that locked door, right? So sometimes you got to be able to go there. So as we spend this next four weeks with this beautiful energy here in water, exploring the fixed water energies, explore your emotions, explore your obsessions, explore where control is a thing for you, explore the occult, explore all of these very scorpionic kind of qualities that essentially tap very close to a vulnerability for you because you really want to make sure that you're motivated to take care of the area of your charts that are Scorpio as well. The sun is saying, let the Scorpio areas of your chart Scorpio. They need to be able to live quite vitally the energy over there. So if you do find yourself intense or, or coming into the space of uh, confronting secrets or coming into the space where you're like, oh, I didn't realize I really loved that or I really desire that or I'm really very passionate about that. I didn't even realize that I'm thinking about something all of the time so much that it's actually an obsession instead of just a thought. Allow the exploration of this particular four week season to just be with you. I think it's beautiful because Scorpio energy, I'll just put some respect on the name. Scorpio energy needs to really be treated very sensitively, but also highly, highly respected because it carries our depth like nothing else does. Okay, I'm off of it. Now, as we're coming to the end of this week, first on the 24th, we're going to see Venus come into a trine with Saturn. Now, as these two light up this particular space, I love this day. I talked about this in the monthlies. This is a phenomenal day for making long-term, long-lasting commitments, okay? Venus is bringing it in, magnetizing this Virgo area of your life. Saturn's over here in Capricorn, quite comfortable, not in retrograde. They're at 26 degrees. What are you making a solid commitment to right here at this particular time? Because they absolutely solid. They absolutely make it solid. You can make a promise on this day. Somebody can make a promise to you on this day. Whatever it is that you intend to jointly commit to, to or with on this day, yes, I support fully. My computer supports it as well. Now, closing out the week here on the 25th, we're going to see the sun and Mercury coming together in conjunction. Now, Mercury is, of course, retrograde. The sun is over here beaming its light, heat, life, and vitality and motivation. So they're both here in the energy of Scorpio. So I actually love this. Even though Mercury is retrograde, I feel like your ability to make decisions, your ability to communicate, your ability to be with your siblings, your ability to pick up on details of things that is going on, it's absolutely on fire. With Mercury retrograde, you can even be reaching back into the depths of your mind for information, for thoughts, for things that you have said before, or maybe even somebody said something to you before in the energy of Scorpio, and you're able to bring it out and transmit that in a way that is so incredibly lovely. Now, I will tell you, as we're here with the sun in Scorpio season and we get to Sunday and Mercury's here, if you have been repressing, if you have been hiding, if you have been stuffing down feelings or information, anything that's been repressed, suppressed, or anything like that, it is making its way to an explosion. It simply is making its way to an explosion. So I want you to understand that as these energies come, invite them and embrace them. Be with whatever comes up for you. Because sometimes the thing that we have been pushing down is the thing that we love the most. It's not always something that is terrible. But whatever is coming up for you, let it come up. This is the season to handle it, to communicate, to share what you need to. Have the conversations from the past and whatever that looks like for you this week, okay? All right, my beautiful friends, like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I will see you next week. I will see you in the eat and greets, and I will see you in all future ways that we get to connect. I love you guys. Bye.